Uh, firstly, I would like to thank Deputy Tom Fleming for introducing this private member's motion uh, tonight and dedicating the this time to issues around elderly care in Ireland. It is a timely issue coinciding with the Dáil motion yesterday expanding the Ombudsman's remit to include private nursing homes. As I stated yesterday, our over-reliance on private residential care and our approach to elderly care has led to underinvestment in our home care sectors. The sector is reaching a critical stage as demand for home care increases with an ageing population taking hold and people begin to prefer a more ho holistic approach to elderly care needs. Predictions suggest that the number could amount to 75,000 people seeking to avail of home health services in 2021, while in 2012, 2012 the number was 48,000. However, there is a growing trend of people being admitted into residential homes, such as nursing homes with low to medium support needs. Alone's Home First campaign has tracked this trend, observing that 35.4% of people in long stay beds have low to medium support needs, with an increase of 44.6% in the number of low dependency beds since 2004. Medium dependency beds have increased by 17.6% since 2004, while overall high to maximum dependency beds are decreasing. And, and we see as well that high dependency beds are more likely to stay and be kept in community hospitals where there is staff and nursing staff available to deal with them. We can only imagine how many of these people are located in hospital A and E wards throughout the country as well. But that has become our policy in dealing with chronically ill elderly patients, leaving them physically on the margins of the healthcare service. It is clear that nursing homes have a policy aimed at a lower level of needs for, for easier and more manageable environments, to reduce staff costs and in an effort to increase profits. Simultaneously, the government has cut funding to vital home care supports for both carers and elderly patients, including supports to improve their housing environment. To further add to the disintegration of the home care model, we are seeing an increase in the number of people aged over 65, which will reach nearly 1 million people by 2031, an increase of more than 86% or an extra 20,000 people every year. 7% of people aged over 65 are living in nursing homes in Ireland, while the, while the figure is just 4% in, in the six counties. People want to age with dignity and respect and as thriving members within their communities, and home care should and can reflect this. These principles are even reflected in government policy documents, in the Programme for Government, the National Service Plan, and in the National Positive Ageing Strategy. Unfortunately, home care continues to be underinvested, underregulated, and undervalued by the current government. Home care can take, sh can take shape in a number of different arrangements, either informally through family members or friends and neighbours, or professionally through the H HSE home care packages, either directly or as more and more the trend is to outsource to private care companies. Firstly, it is important to note that this country does not appreciate or respect the care role and that many family members occupy for an elderly relative or others who provide informal care. The Cares Allowance and Respite Care Grant have been under constant attack and scrutiny in successive budgets. It is imperative if we, if we are to have an ounce of respect for, for the carer's role that we invest in and protect our carers in the community by maintaining these supports and improving on them to fit within the home health model. The carer's allowance needs to be maintained alongside the half-rate carer's allowance. People could also be encouraged into employment by becoming carers if the government had the imagination when it comes to labour activation measures. Direct supports to elderly people are also under threat. The living alone allowance does not reflect the current standard of living, and the over 70s GP card is too restrictive, allowing only free GP care without access to the services that come with a medical card. Eurostat data released this year shows that the government spent just 10% of social protection outlay on the elderly in 2013, almost 12% less than the year's own standard. Countries like Bulgaria, Luxembourg, Austria and Romania all dedicated over 25% of their spend to the elderly. The state pension has not seen an increase in, since 2009 and for many elderly people their weekly incomes have been cut by over €14. Euro. It is important that the forthcoming budget and the household in the forthcoming budget that the household benefits package, free travel scheme, Christmas bonus, household adaptation grant and disability grant and other supports for the elderly are maintained. A lack of financial investment in home health hours, home care packages, mobility aid cuts and a lack of housing supports have meant that people are being forced away from the home care setting and into residential care. 1.6 million hours of home help were removed from the sector over the last four years. Funding for home health service has declined by almost 12 per cent since 2009. Overall, 72 per cent of the older people's services budget was spent in nursing home support scheme. Fair deal. While only 9 per cent of the budget is, is allocated to home care packages. 
Furthermore, cuts to housing supports like the Housing Adaptation Grant have seen a reduction from 79 million in 2011 to 50 million in 2015. As a result, home care provision is incredibly underinvested and is unevenly distributed across the country. Thankfully, in Donegal, we have one of the lowest proportions of people living in, elderly people living in, in nursing homes in the country, and we have a culture of supporting the elderly in their homes. But that is, as well has been put under threat with cuts to home help hours, and not even hours now, it's more like home help minutes that, pa that patients have. We also have a highly unre unregulated home care system. Many informal carers are not recognised, and there are no set standards and no legal obligations on home care provider companies to vet staff. HICWA is left with no remit to monitor and enforce the sector, even though we have heard time and time again of dreadful standards witnessed in some private home care settings. The HSE is paying millions to home care providers, and due to the unregulated market, thousands of elderly people are at risk of poor quality care, abuse and medication failures. This is against the backdrop of the majority of the 50-plus private providers in Ireland not having relevant external quality assurance certification. Certification was only reflective of their business practices and management systems, not the level and quality of care they provide for an elderly person. The HSE claims that approved providers are selected through a tendering process covering areas such as client-focused service, appropriate complaints process and training and supervision of staff with a new tendering process nearing completion in 2013. But yet we are in 2015 and we still haven't seen the, the rollout of this. This is over four years since it was first promised, and we don't have another four years to wait. But it, it is needed, and most of all, to ensure the quality of care for elderly people. Finally, I would just like to con congratulate and recognise the incredible work that the voluntary organisations such as the Loan and Age Action do in the area of home care provision, independent adv advocacy and campaigning for the rights and recognition of elderly people's, people's needs. I only wish the government could have such a strong record as many of these organisations have shown. We might otherwise be witnessing a more dignified approach to our most vulnerable in society. Thank you, Deputy.